Yo, what's up everybody? It's Stefan here from Mod to Fame and we are back with another video. It's time that I bring you guys inside a little bit. We talk about cars all the time. You know everything about how I feel about cars, but you don't really know too much about where I came from, who I am. So today, I'm gonna let you guys in just a little bit. We riding out in this Rolls Royce Ghost and we gonna go to all my old hoods. All right, y'all, uh, get ready, let's go. So for those of you that don't know, man, if this is your first time visiting this channel, this video is outside of the norm. What we normally focus on is car reviews uh, for modified cars, our project cars that we're working on, and events that we go to and hold. But today I'm doing something a little bit different. So if this is your first video and you came here as a car channel, make sure you check out all our other ones. But for everybody else, man, my M2 efforts that are interested to know your boy Steph was born and raised in Brooklyn. So I'm actually riding through Brooklyn right now in this uh, this beautiful Rolls Royce Ghost applied to me by Supreme Elegance for the day. So I figured, you know what, man? This is an ultimate high. Let me take you on a little bit of a journey uh, of my development of you know, how I actually, you know, reached a point like this where I have people and connections that can put me in vehicles like these and circles like these because it all comes together. It's it's all a package, right? So our first stop right now, man, we're going to stop off and I want to show y'all the projects that I used to live in and then also the thing that was the most meaningful to me that was right up the street from those projects. All right, come on. We are in bed stop Brooklyn. We riding down Myrtle Avenue right now. So Myrtle Avenue, man, is we riding past right now. If you can see it, uh, some of the PJs over here. I didn't live in these PJs, but some of the PJs, which we about to come up on, which is Myrtle and Troop, is where I grew up. I went to this community center from time to time. Yeah, man, this is one of the hoods that I spent some time in. I think I was maybe 10 to 12. Well, 10 to 11, I stayed in this area for about a year, man. So to be honest with you, things had got really hard for us. We had to move as a family. I mean, total, I told you already, I've lived in seven places in Brooklyn growing up. So that was a lot. Most, most people spend their whole lifetimes in one place. Me, I moved all over Brooklyn because, you know, things wasn't easy. But at the same time, my mom, my family did a very good job of keeping us sheltered. So if you look straight all the way up, you can see these beautiful tall buildings. Let me tell you something, that wasn't there. But here's the building where I actually lived in. It's uh, right here, 231 Troop. And as you can see the sign, it says some of the houses. That's where I actually lived <laughs> for a little while. Uh, like I said, that was, that was like, I think that was like the toughest period of us growing up. My mom did a great job keeping us sheltered from what was around us by my school, for an example. I used to travel so far just to go to school because my mother did not want me going to school in this area, which, I mean, I'm much appreciative for. The crazy part is right up the street is the church that kept me sheltered where I spent so much of my time during the week. So it was from school to after school at the church. It was from that, from there to the after school program at the church and right up the street from the church. This is Tompkins that we rolling past right now. This is Tompkins projects that we rolling past right now and right up the street was Marcy projects where Jay-Z is from. So actually in one of his rhymes, he's like, you must love me is the name of the song or something like that. And he's like, and Shorty went up to Tompkins to sort those dudes to trust. I don't know what she was thinking. Them niggas was foul just like us. <laughs> so that's the Tompkins projects he was talking about. And uh, Marcy is right up here, which we about to see in a minute. But right now we rolling up on um, the church where I grew up. And this is where I spent all of my time. Like after school, summer program, my first jobs, everything was this church right here that we passing that we about to roll up on. All right, y'all, so we somewhere real special right now. This represents everything that uh, I am as from a foundation and a structure standpoint. We are right now in my family's church. We don't usually film the sanctuary and stuff like that, but 
I want to bring you guys with me. I want to show you where I came up. I want to show you where I spent so much of my time. Come on. <laughs> man, oh man. So this is my grandfather's life's work right here. Um, as you can see, and you can hear from the acoustics, it's beautiful. Everything is brick, wood, and just the highest quality of glass. You see all the stainless, all around you, man. All of that was on purpose, so that this way when you echo, it's tight, it's, it, it, but it travels, right? So that was designed by my grandfather, but this place right here is why I have the ability to jump in front of a camera with y'all right now because my family, my mom used to make me get right up on that mic right there. And I better say my Sunday school, Easter, black history, <laughs> everything happened here. And there was no shot. There was nothing about that. So with, you know, this church holds probably about 220 people and full, full, I would have to get up and say what I had to say. So only time I come here is like, for like visits for special events when they have here for like my family, my grandparents, stuff like that. So being here in an empty space, I can really appreciate what went into this, man. What what makes this, what makes me, I just remember so many things. I mean, here is where I learned the importance of helping one another, the importance of policies and politics. Believe it or not, that happens a lot in the black church. Here's where I learned um, just how to be brave and get up and, you know, fight for what I believe in. It gave me my sense of purpose. So even though I was growing up in like not the best areas, it didn't matter because here I was a king. So I grew up with that mentality that I can do anything. There's nothing that, that, that could stop me. And, you know, just to give you guys an impact of what this church has in this community here in Bedford Stuyvesant is that we feed the community every single day. There's a line of people waiting to eat at the soup kitchen. And that is every single day here. In addition to that, I believe on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's food pantry where they give away clothes and, and, and canned goods. So. This church has a major impact in the community and it had a major impact on me because anytime a major politician wanted to get elected or anything like that for this district or for the state of New York at all, they will come here, including Hillary Clinton was here at the time, David Dinkins and, you know, just all sorts of different poli po uh, politicians that I've got a chance to interact with one on one because of who my family is in the community. So. Man, guys, it is it is crazy being back in. I just wanted to bring y'all real quick with me. But for those of you who uh, think that I grew up privileged, in a way, I did. I did. I grew up very privileged, very sheltered. That doesn't mean that I grew up uh, with money. That doesn't mean that I grew up with a silver spoon. I didn't, I mean, we didn't have it like that. But here, we had everything we needed. in Mike's Pizza right now on the corner of Tompkins and Myrtle. I used to come here all the time. This was my spiznae right here. This is my spot. Let's see if the same people still work here. So they got all the joints on deck. They don't got fancy on me. They ain't have all these fancy pieces back then. I used to live in here. Like, all, if I could scrape together, that's when a, a slice was a dollar twenty-five. I used to scrape together whatever I could to get <laughs> my dollar twenty-five slice. And next door is a Chinese restaurant where I used to go to all the time. So this is my my spot right here. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna do a little boy. Little boy, I know. Hey, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a barbecue chicken. Chicken, tomato with a little extra salt. I'm good, man. How you been? How's business? Oh yeah, salt. Yeah, salt. Okay. So the crazy part is, this is—I mean, I've, I've had been long gone from this area, but I didn't. 
crazy part is right here on this corner, I'm gonna show y'all in a minute, but right here on this corner, I don't know if y'all remember a couple years ago, there was a police shooting where a guy just rolled up on a car killed um, a police officer shooting in, sitting in the car. I think he killed both of them. Matter of fact, I'll put those news clips in right now to catch y'all up to speed. York City police officers are dead following an ambush Saturday afternoon. Police Commissioner William Bratton says officers Wenji and Lou and Rafael Ramos were shot while they sat in their patrol car in Brooklyn. Both sustained gunshot wounds to the head. It was actually right here on this corner right here. Unfortunately, man, when the when that crazy guy shot the police officers, that was uh it made news everywhere. That was that was terrible and they locked down this whole area, like this whole area was locked down for like two days. This this block was, this whole block was blocked off. This block was blocked off. It was crazy, man. All right, so we got our next stop. Our next stop was when I lived on Patchen Avenue in Brooklyn. This is like Bed-Stuy, Bushwick, borderline area. But facts, I lived in this building right here. <laughs> so that cleaner spot on the corner, I used to always visit that cleaners. Uh, that little deli right there, that little grocery. But that was my building right here. Most of Brooklyn, pretty much everywhere in Brooklyn is not the same anymore. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, Brooklyn used to be Brooklyn for real back in the day the one you used to see in movies with all the graffiti and you know the trains was all graffitied up and it wasn't that safe yeah that was the brooklyn that i pretty much grew up in but now uh post gentrification there's really nowhere in these areas that don't pretty much feel safe you know you know what i mean and i'm i'm some things are good about that and then some things are bad about that because you have people who live forever in these areas and now they can't afford to live there anymore. So I used to come out right here. Um, my first car. So I got my first car at 7, 16, 17. And this lot on the corner right here is where I used to park the cars. I used to pay $80 a month to park my car there so it wouldn't have to be on the street. Um, that lot is now no more. And it looks like they're probably tearing the building down next to it. This is my spot. You know about this church uh, man this church used to be like some rundown looking thing i tell you man gentrification is a hell of a drug sure it is man it is, it i mean i'm not money. saying it's a bad thing but i just know what that means for the for the locals man that's been living here forever my man ricky actually live up the street right here hmm. but he owned so hopefully he didn't sell but good god man Bushwick, nonetheless. I see new properties, new buildings going up in Bushwick. Man, nobody wanted to touch this area when I lived here. Yeah, they sure didn't. I, I didn't even want to touch this area <laughs> when I lived here. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I would drive through this area with my doors locked, windows up. Windows in the summertime. <laughs> doors locked, windows up. It would be summertime. You ain't putting that window down. Hell no. Come up and snatch your Hell no. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. Oh, how it changed. Crazy, bro. Another place I lived in Brooklyn. We in Bushwick right now. We in Bushwick on Cornelia Street. Man, I tell you, 
Um, so what's funny about the block that we on right now, um, Jay-Z's nephew used to live like a couple doors down across the street. And uh, there was a time coming out of this house right here. I saw that Range Rover 4.6 and it was your boy Jay. Your boy Jay was actually sitting right there. So for all the time that, uh, you know, I was at the church and it was right up the street from Marcy Projects. The only time I had ever seen Jay-Z in Marcy Projects is when they were shooting the Hard Knock Life video. When he had that Rolls Royce and the Hard Knock, matter of fact, hit that clip right now. Hit that clip, Brian. Went for lukewarm to hot, sleeping on futons and cots, the king size, green machines, the green fives. Another block that I grew up on, man. Like I said, I moved around BK a lot. You realize, I didn't realize as a young person, like as a kid, you just did what you had to do and you followed, you did what your mother said. So, you know, it was what it was, but legit, <laughs> I moved around BK a lot. But what was cool about living here, man, was in the middle of Bushwick, we had Queens right there. As um, soon as you, Ridge Hill, Queens was right there. Uh, Best Style was right there. So I used to ride my bicycle from here. On Saturdays, I would ride my bicycle from here all the way to the church where we, where we left. And I showed you guys, man. So... I tell you, if you would have told me, though, <laughs> if you would have told me back then, one thing, I, I didn't know that I ain't have it like that, but I know I ain't have it like this either. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I still don't got it like this. But we not far, right, Gene? We on our we way, far. right? We pushing, brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it feel good to be back on the block, man. Long time. We about to motivate, man. I hope that y'all enjoyed this journey with me so far. Matter of fact, we'll finish talking in the car. Come on. Peace out, Bushwick. So yeah, guys, y'all actually seeing my reactions for the first time of coming back in a very long time to these areas. So I get to reminisce and remember different things of what it was like being here, what it was like growing up here, and uh, just so much and is ingrained in me. And if y'all like this type of video, man, drop it in the comments. Yo, Steph, you know, share more. If you think this type of thing is inspiring to you, then you, you know, you could do that. And this cop is actually taking a picture of the car, I think. <laughs> I swear to goodness, I, I really do. Like, I see him holding his hands like this with two thumbs. So I think he's taking a picture of the ghost. I think that's the first one we got all day today. <laughs> and it's a police officer. Thank you for your service. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, man, it's, it's, it's pretty cool coming back. And I'm so inspired, Gene, mm -hmm. to work hard, to Absolutely. really build this channel. Yeah. To really get it to where I know it can be. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, I could feel that we are on the brink mm -hmm. of something huge. Great. Yeah. I feel like we are. If we just continue to push and continue to put out the type of content that we put out, the quality in which we put out, that we really just gonna, we really just gonna really take over our space Correct. in our area. Correct. You know what I mean? And believe it or not, I know you know YouTube still seems like something that all of you know about, but as far as the being a creator on YouTube, that's still pretty new. It's not something that everybody is doing, but within the next couple of years, they will be. And they're gonna look at channels like ours that, you know, as we get closer to the end of the year, you know, we can reflect on our growth. And so far for this year, man, we've picked up already 55,000 additional subscribers. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? Amazing. Which in the first year, it took us a whole year to get the first 10,000. Yep. <laughs> so like everything else, it's, it it comes as a snowball, yeah. right? It starts out and then it just, as it as it continues to roll, it gets bigger and bigger. And because of you in two efforts, man, we are rolling. We are rolling thanks to y'all, but we need another push. We need y'all to start liking and sharing. We need y'all to comment as much as possible. Even if you just say, what up, Steph? I will do my best to try and respond. Mm -hmm. I really will, you know, and with the help of Gene, with the help of my brother, we're going to get it done for y'all, man. But if y'all like this series, we can do more about, you know, just times, memories in my life that I could share with you guys. Memories of an m 2 effort or the life of the m 2 effort. <laughs> hey! <laughs>
<laughs> oh, I think I like Man. that one. But if you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification. bell notification so you, you don't, don't miss, miss no nah. more videos. But until the next one, it's your boy Stefan here from Mod the Fame. Or Eugene. Chilling with Eugene here from Mod the Fame. And then this Rolls Royce Ghost again. We out. We out.